It's a covenant term. It's a family term. I'm going to my father, your father, my God, your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples she had seen the Lord and spoken these things to her. Then the same day at the evening. The same day. It's important you catch this. Don't cling to me. I haven't ascended to the Father. Choo! He takes off. We know he was on the road to Emmaus with some disciples. And towards evening they broke bread and their eyes were open and he disappeared. So there was a lot going on that day. But we know one thing. He disappeared from them in the evening. And in the evening in the same day he came back to the disciples. So somewhere in that. Choo! Choo! Right back. What? The same day in the evening, the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, the disciples were assembled for fear. Not for faith, for fear. So they weren't getting anything right yet. <laughs> While we were yet... So they weren't getting anything right yet. They were assembled for fear, not faith. Jesus still came to them, didn't he? Still rose from the dead, didn't he? Not one man getting it right, but one man got it right. And now every man can go free. This is amazing. Watch. For fear of the Jews, he came and stood in the midst of them and said to them, what did he say? Peace be with you. What's Romans 5 say? You have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ being justified by faith. What happened? Jesus put his blood on the mercy seat and made peace between God and man in the war of sin. And man and God is over forever. God has made peace through his son. And the first thing out of Jesus' mouth was what? Peace to you. Now watch. When he had said this, he showed him his hands, his side. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said again to them. Listen guys. He didn't say that. That's me talking. He said, peace to you. Now watch. So he affirms peace again. And what's he said? As the Father sent me, so I send you. You say, well, he's talking to the apostles, Dan. No, he's talking to you too. Because he told the apostles to go make believers of every nation and teach them to observe everything he taught them. So if he's talking to them, he's talking to us. Watch. Peace be to you, as the Father sent me, I send you. Now watch. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, what he said? Receive the Holy Spirit. It's amazing. What just happened? It's so beautiful. Why didn't they just tell him, be filled with the Holy Spirit? There's power in words. Why didn't you just line them up and touch their forehead and get a couple catchers? Fill, 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 fill. Why did Jesus breathe on them and say, be filled with the Holy Spirit? Why didn't he just say, be filled with the Holy Spirit? He could have, it seems, but he could not. Why? Because he's the redemption of man. How did God make man in the beginning? What was lost when man sinned? The breath of God. The life of God. The living soul. The image of God. Found in the breath of God. <laughs> Man died that day, but Jesus rose and man can live again. So what did God do? Because he washed sin away and vanquished sin so completely as if man never ever ate the tree. He took man back to the garden place of creation and breathed back into them that his sin never was. And caused man to live again. Hallelujah. Because of the power of the blood on the mercy seat. So God just repainted the picture of man's created value. And in his own image, he made man has listened to Jesus. As the Father said, I said. Do you hear any limit in that? Or do you think that's image reproduced after his own kind? And man became a living being. Why? Because the blood is so powerful that God sees man as if he's never, ever eaten the tree. Yes. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we still fight the fight of sin when we're called to fight the good fight of faith. You following me? Yes. Yo. Yeah. Listen, I preached something tonight very powerful about the forgiveness of sins. If you have to leave, you leave. But if you can stay, stay for this. I'll do this as quick as I can, but it'll be powerful. And I wouldn't be saying it if there wasn't somebody here. There's people 
that have done things in their life and made mistakes and it's cost them. And if they could go back and change what they did, they would, but they can't. But their hearts could change. And if their hearts change, then God will never judge you for what you did. He'll judge you for what you've become. Yes. And if the thing you did has marked your life in any way, organ, memory, you could have went out on a binge one night and just went excessive and did something extreme and lost your short term or, or your memory or your ability to comprehend, God will give that back to you. You could have got something in your bloodstream. You could have hurt an organ. You could have done something to your body. You could have made a mistake that is still marking you and reminding you and causing you to remember the day you would love to forget. And I'm telling you, the mercy of God is in this room Amen. to wash through you and make you free. Amen. I know married couples that when they were young got an STD and carried that thing into their marriage and had to fight with that thing their whole marriage. But yet they're born again and they wish they never messed around when they were kids <coughs> and they wish they would have just came in clean. Well, you can come in clean. Because tonight God can take that thing out of your marriage. How's that? Amen. You can go get your blood checked and you can tell your pastor. Because I'm telling you, God in play, He shed blood to get you free. Amen. And He shed blood to make you clean. This is not about shame and people wondering where you've been and what you've done and what you have in your body. It's about you saying, this is not who I am, and I'm done carrying this thing, because Christ lives in me. And when you come up front here for prayer in a second, what you're saying is, this is not who I am. And thank you, Father, for redemption. Are you following me? Come on, this thing is a big deal. I've watched a whole lot of people get saved, healed, delivered, and free. That's a great life. So I want you to be humble right now. I'm going to do a quick thing. I'm just going to go down through and say, be redeemed. Be redeemed. Be made whole. Be made whole. Be redeemed. God knows what I'm saying. Heaven understands. It's not a long prayer. It's never your prayer anyway. It's His grace and power. Amen. It's not what you pray, it's what you believe that releases the authority of heaven. I was in a state, a 52-year-old lady came down the front, and I was going down the aisle praying. She grabbed me by the arm, she leaned in and said, I'm not that kind of girl. I'm not that kind of girl. I said, I understand, honey. You're a woman of God. Every girl understand. She said, my husband of 30 years left me for a young woman. I tailspun and got in identity crisis. Felt lonely. Felt like I lost my zen, my womanhood, my flair. The man took attention towards me and never done anything like it in my life. But in a moment of loneliness and despair and just frazzled from my husband's decisions, it's no excuse. I was deceived. I gave myself to this man. And as I was giving myself to this man, I knew in an instant it was not the answer. And I just felt defiled and disgusted. And I was... I was like, oh, and, and, and it was over, and I felt terrible. And then to top it off, I started getting these symptoms and found that I have this rare form of herpes now in my blood, and they said it's going to hurt my body bad. Pretty sad story, isn't it? She learned a hard lesson, a lesson nonetheless. And you might not agree with what I did. I'm not really asking you to. I'm sorry. <laughs> But that thing gets in me because I understand some stuff. And I said, you look at me and you look at me. <coughs> and this passion that you see on me right now came on me, this fervency. And I said, that's coming out of you right now. And there ain't nothing nobody can do about it. <coughs> do you hear me? Yes. And I said, you let her go. And don't you ever touch her again. <coughs> he said, brother, that's... Well, don't tell the herpes. Because I went back there six weeks later, and this lady comes bouncing up to me. And it was a no-brainer. I didn't need discernment. I was filling in. They didn't have a pastor. And I was just going there all the time, flying into there. And I was there a whole bunch in a short time. She came up to me, and she said, guess what? I said, what? I went to my doctor, they ran every sort of test, and it's nowhere to be found in my blood. I said, it's awesome, honey. I said, do you know why? She said, yes. She answered, just like you and I would. She said, because God is so loving and so faithful and so amazing. I said, yeah, all well, that's true, but that's not the answer that I'm looking for. 
She said, there is no other answer. I said, yes, there is. You're not that kind of girl. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's powerful. I it's because she's not that kind of girl. Repentance means she changed. I shared it with young Ben today. In Acts chapter 2, the crowd got convicted of killing Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit. They got cut to the heart. Study the phrase out. They weren't like, whoa, dude, we killed Jesus. <laughs> they were pulling out their hair, falling on the ground, tearing their clothes, and making a hysterical scene. Because in a millisecond, their arrogance was confronted. Their deception was confronted. And they were convicted of guilt of the death of Jesus Christ, their Savior. In an instant. And they didn't know what to do with the conviction. Because how do you answer for killing God? And they cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said, Change your mind and wish you didn't kill him, and you'll all be forgiven, and you'll all be filled with the Spirit, and you'll all be sons. Whoa, wait, whoa, wait. We killed the Son of God. We're guilty of his death. What should we do? Wish you didn't. Be baptized to remove what you did. Be filled with God's Spirit, and you all become sons. Amen. That's God's justice. <clears throat> and if that works for Jesus, that ought to work for you. Wait, we're guilty. There was people in the crowd that were going, Barabbas, Barabbas. There was people in the crowd going, crucify him. And in a minute of time, the Holy Spirit touched them and they remembered that and realized that and there was no escape of the guilt of the death of the Son of God. <coughs> And when they cried out and said, what should we do? Because how do you make up for that, man? How do you make up for that? When they cried out, what do we do? Jesus, through Peter, by the Holy Spirit said, repent. Wish you didn't do it. Be baptized so it shows as if you never did. Come out brand new and all be signs. That's how God handles things when people change. If you have anything in your life, don't be ashamed. You get up here quickly. Why would you sit in your chair? Don't you carry a mark into tomorrow if you're a brand new creature in Christ. If you hurt an organ, if you hurt your digestive system, if you hurt your memory, if there's something in your bloodstream, if there's anything that you carried into your life from your former actions, former days, that you wish you could change, but you can't, God, I'll change it tonight. I believe it with all my heart. So you come on up front here real quick. There's 15 people. I promise you. There's 15 people. I, I know when I hear it all. There's 15 people. And I just need you to come up. Don't you be ashamed. It's not about where you've been. It's about who you've become. It's not about what you're coming up for. I could care less. That isn't my issue. I don't even need to know why you're standing here. I'm just glad you are. Thanks for your humility. Thanks for your humility. Thanks for coming up here. Thank you, kiddo. When I was sharing this, you just burst into tears because it sounded too good to be true, but you could hear it was true. Good. God makes up for any mistake we've made once our hearts go. Your heart's going. Right? Thank you for being a man of God. I'm just telling you, I need five people. I just know when I hear God. I need 15 people up here, man. Why would you sit in your chair? Don't you be ashamed. Thank you. You're just standing with her, or are you in line? Okay. We're getting close. <laughs> I just need three. I'm just telling you, you're here. I don't know why you can sit there. I'm not going to plead and beg much. I know. You can hear me arrogant if you want. I know when I hear God. And he said, 15. Real clear in my heart. And I need you up here. And why you would sit there would just be self-preservation, shame, wrong thinking, letting the devil hold you back from redemption. You say, well, I'll apply this to my life later. No, that's just consciousness of man. That's just By your spirit, spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name. Be washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. That's right. Stand in His holiness. 
stand in his presence and be a son redeemed. Not one regret, just a transformed heart and mind. For you, my friend, with that name. You stand in the holiness of who I am because I made it possible. And I have never seen a part of me. So stand in this God and be not ashamed and don't even be amazed. I have never seen you a part of me. So stand. Hmm. Wow. In my holiness and be one, says the Lord. Mm. Just lift your hands to Jesus, please. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in us. We thank you for the holy atmosphere. And with every hand raised, I pray that you impart a grace right now that's personal, that's individual, and that hits the mark of every heart. I thank you that you have the ability to sweep through this room and touch every person intimately. Bring change, bring increase, bring wisdom, bring grace, bring peace, bring transformation. Touch your children, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, let the holiness of your presence come upon us. Don't let one person be missed and escape the revelation of your love tonight. Come, Holy Spirit, and reveal yourself to everyone. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you, and I pray. Amen and amen. Pastor, you can close, or I can just say goodbye. Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, sorry about the 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> We love you. Jesus loves you. You have nothing but to be encouraged. Yeah. As a man died for you, he didn't open your car door. Amen. He gave his life so that you might live. So leave in the gospel and live in the gospel. Yeah. Return in the gospel. And every time you come, come to know him more, to look more like him when you leave. Good. Because you came. Amen. Always come with purpose to love one another to celebrate Him and be changed by Him to look more like Him when you leave. Because yeah. you come here, but you live there. Yep. So go be like Him in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I love you. The parking lot is slippery. Walk carefully. Or men will think you're drunk. <laughs> One more, and if you'll come, we can pray and God can move. Thank you so much. I just had to plead a little. I appreciate you all coming. I'm not upset that you took time. I realize some of these things have pressures to them. Thank you. I was just in the church and I prayed for depressions and stuff. And I said, listen. There's three people here, and I need you to stand quickly. And it took so long, nobody moved. I said, guys, you're here. It's three of you. It's two ladies and a man. Please stand up. And finally, one of the ladies stood up and trembled and cried. I said, honey, why'd you take so long to stand up? She said, because people stereotype you and look down on you and feel like something's wrong with you and they have emotional stuff. I said, do you feel that way? She said, yeah. I said, honey, you're in the family, God. I would hope that doesn't happen here, but I'm glad you stood because I would never see you that way. And as soon as she said that, the other person stood up. And they told me they were feeling the same way. And the man never stood up. And I promise you, he was sitting there. I just know when I hear God. Dave, can you come up and play for me real sweet? And we're just going to close with this, and I'm going to pray for these guys. I am so proud of you guys. Hey, look at me for a minute. I am so proud of you guys for coming up here. Okay? Because it's not about anything about yesterday. It's about who you are today. And Jesus loves you with the blood of his son. 
And Jesus forgives you. And Jesus washes everything clean and makes all things new. It's not about the mistakes we made. It's about the way we've allowed our hearts to change. Now let me all ask you all a question. If you could go back and change the things you've done in your life now that you see. And you had the opportunity to go back and make different decisions. Would you do that? Do you believe you'd all do that? Well then listen to me. The people I'm looking at are not the people you're remembering from yesterday. You've been changed. You've been changed. And I'm proud of you all. I'm going to lay hands on you. It's very simple. It's not a charismatic thing. You might and you might not feel the presence of God. Probably will feel His love and His sense of acceptance. There's probably a sweet thing coming all out of you. I'm kind of sensing that right now. <laughs> Some of you just need to cut them a little. <laughs> It'll be so good. <laughs> but here's what I'm passionate about. That the reason you came up here leaves your life. Amen? Amen? Thanks for coming up here. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I'm proud of you. I'm just going to go down the line. I'm going to lay hands on you guys. As I'm doing that, I want you, as I'm coming down, just start thanking God that He loves you, that He forgives you, that He sees you as if you've never done anything wrong, that through the blood of Jesus, He sees you as if you've never been true. Not that He comes to this earth and breathes life into you. It says, Peace. Father, I thank you for this family. Just stand there. You just receive it. Father, thank you for loving me. Thank you for rekindling hope again. Destiny, God. Present and future. Live. Thank you, Father, that tonight you make all things new. That this man walks out of here as if he's never eaten the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That just like the men in John 20, he stands before you and you call him brethren. It's not about where he's been. It's not about what happened. It's about what you've done inside of his heart. It's about tears of godly sorrow. It's about a desire for change. You are making a brand new man. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Wash right through him and make all things new. Every mark of yesterday, leave his life. Come on, God, thank you. Make all things new. Touch him, God, deeply, spirit, soul, and body, blameless, blameless till the coming of the Son of God, the true righteousness, the true holiness. You stand in the presence of God. On the washing. It's so good. Liberate him, God. Make his soul free. And help his heart to understand. And let his flesh be cleansed. I love you. Guys, talk to Jesus right now. Thank Him that He loves you. That He forgives you of everything you've ever done. That you'll never be the same. That yesterday is gone. Today is come. Okay? I'm telling you. Some of you will be healed before I even get to you. I'm just telling you. you just be healed before I even get there. In Jesus' name. I'll thank you for redemption. Holy Spirit, come. That's right. Let your love wash through here. May go <laughs> you make all things new. You really do. Man, you love your kids. You make all things new. Man, it does what you think isn't even possible, sweetheart. He puts a brand new heart in you, a brand new mind to comprehend, a brand new desire. Man, he makes all things new. You know, there was a time in your life, I see, where you thought you couldn't get it right. You thought you were a problem waiting to happen. But I'm telling you what, God's saying that isn't you at all. That was deception. That was a low identity. That was a lack of understanding and esteem. It was a time where life drove you into a place where you didn't want to go. But I'm telling you what, God has wooed you to His presence and to His love. And He's making all things new. 
I see it. I see the deception that tried to drive your life and extinguish you and tell you that you weren't worth living. Your life didn't matter. But God's showing you it does matter. God's showing you you're valuable and precious and you're worth the blood of His Son. God seems to think that Him dying is worth you living. Oh, I thank you, God, that every lie over her life is broken. I thank you she can never look back there and even grieve. Never look back and consider again. I thank you, Father, you've touched her with a deep and everlasting love. You're marking her and sealing her, God, for destiny. You're marking her heart for glory. You make all things new. Man, I keep hearing that little phrase over you. It makes you feel happy in your heart, I know. This is going to be so good. I don't do this once, but I feel this for you. Give me your hands, sweetheart. What's your name? Michelle, close your eyes. Forget about me. I'm telling you, the presence of God is going to flow. And come on, you're stronger than you felt. It's going to flow right through my hands, right into your body. He's going to make all things new. Thank you, Father. You break every compulsion, every indecision, every illicit desire, everything that tries to violate and gray out her conscience. God, tonight, you're marking her for destiny. You're putting a heart in her that's unstoppable. You're putting a conscience in her that's clear. And you're making her body free and clean. Mm. And I thank you, you're marking her as if she's never sinned. You're marking her for righteousness and you're taking every stain away, spirit, soul, and body. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. That's right. More. More, Lord. Thank you more. Yeah, go deeper. Go deep inside of this precious woman. Make all things new. Because you love her. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. It's really good. Yeah, I know you feel this presence. That's just lovely. Isn't that sweet? Makes you feel happy, doesn't it? Makes you feel special, doesn't it? Now listen, this is where you're called to live. This is your birthright and your destiny. This isn't, we're not making this up, this is an emotional outcome either. This is God's presence. And I'm telling you, if you'll lay on your bed, and just lift your hands when nobody's looking and say, Jesus, you make all things new, and I receive your love. The same presence you feel is going to come on you all the time. He's going to cuddle you, nurture you, and walk with you. He will never leave you alone. I'm telling you, there's dramatic change coming to your life starting tonight. Dramatic. Things that seem like strongholds are crushed. Things that seem like vulnerabilities are no more. Girl, you're not a problem waiting to happen. You're a woman of God in the making. And I'm excited for you. Now, I'm not going to take that much time with all of you. I don't hear all that stuff. Don't take that personal. You came up here to be clean and free. Where's she at? Is she, where's that at? What's your name? Mary Ann? Put your hand on your heart right now. In Jesus' name, you be clean and you be free, Mary Ann. Thank you for your faith, honey. Spirit of God, come upon this woman now. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Take every mark away. Take it all away. Mary Ann, you be free. You be clean. You be clear. Spirit, soul, body, till the coming of the sun. I bless you, girl. I'm proud of you. In Jesus' name, behold. Holy Spirit, come. Keep your hand on your heart, honey. Just slip to your knees. Surrender yourself to Him. Thank Him that He loves you. Don't be ashamed. If somebody's in the room, forget about them for a minute. You let Jesus ravage you with His love. I see God encountering you and marking you in a special way. Let Him love you, sweetheart. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. You make all things new in her. That's good. No, that's all right. Just receive. You don't have to fall down. Just take that. That's good. He came right on you, didn't he? He's all through you, isn't he? Isn't that sweet? You know what he's doing? He's teaching people to stand in his presence. Sometimes we feel like we just got a crashing wreck. I tell people, man, you just stand up. We've been knocked down enough. Just stand in him and know you have the right to be one with him. Yeah. Oh, that's man, I'm having fun with you. <laughs> Jesus, you're washing her. That's beautiful. Breathe right through her. Make all things new, God. 
I just see you standing there. I see God breathing right through your own and making you whole. Father, I thank you it's impossible for her to walk out the way she came. I thank you you've changed all things in Jesus' name. Yay for you, Jesus. You can stand there and thank you. We love you for living. You can leave anytime you're ready, but just glad with love you for living. Holy Spirit, touch your kids. Touch this precious woman. Thank you. That's right. This is his father right there. Man, he accepts you. He is not disappointed. I don't know why he would ever think he's disappointed. But he loves you. He doesn't tolerate you, honey. He loves you. He doesn't put up with you. He loves you. I'm telling you, God doesn't have to labor to think much as he is. He knows what he's made you to be. And he's going to begin to teach you who you are. And teach you that you are that valuable. And it almost sounds too good to be true. You know you're preaching the gospel clear when it sounds almost like a fairy tale. Because it's good news. Good news. So you be whole, honey. And you stand in the presence of God as if you've never made a mistake or eaten a tree. And you stand washed, cleansed, and pure in His sight. In Jesus' name. Bless your kids, God. Touch the man of God. Touch the man of God. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Wash right through him and make all things new. Yeah. Mark his heart down for glory. Wash right through his body, right through his blood. Yeah. Get him, Holy Spirit. Let your love ravage him. More, more, Lord. Don't let one thing remain. Thank you for your unstoppable love. Oh, that's so good. All right, just receive. Oh my goodness, receive, guys. Receive. Receive the love of God. Receive the power of His blood. Receive the redemption of the cross. And stand clean and free forever in the presence of your King. Yeah. Wash the man of God. Wash him. Touch this precious woman. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you. Breathe. Freshness of life. Breathe in the dark. Holy Spirit, come. <laughs> like a spring day. It's the sunshine and things bloom and blossom. Just anticipation of new, green, life, fresh. Man, I hear God saying, whatever you think was a winter season in your life, count it gone. Today is a new day springing forth. It's like the dawning of the sun. It's like the spring. I see you as a tree budding and blossoming. I see leaves and flowers all over. I see fruit just fashioning and forming in your life. And I see you never, ever again looking over your shoulder. I see you looking up from when you came to help. <clears throat> and I see your continual help in your life. I thank you for freedom in her life. I thank you there is not a day of slavery and not a day of regret. There was a rejoicing of salvation from this day forever in her life. Amen. So be clean, be washed, be free, my child. So how I love you. Oh, how I've longed. To nurture you and make you whole. For I am the living God. I know you. I know you well. I know exactly who you are. I saw you before time. And I'm going to teach you who you are. As I have always done. And I have never lost sight of you. Even in the chaotic season of life. I have never lost sight of my 
my child. Now that you've come to me, show me. Show me. I'll make all things. Yes. <clears throat> so I love you. It's that simple, John. Because I love you. I love you. I always do. Thank you for what you're doing in their hearts, in their lives, and even in their bodies. Let them be wiser, and sharper, and smarter than they've ever been before. God, let them leave this arm transformed in every way. Put a diligence in them, God, a militant serve you, love you, know you, be an example of your glory and your majesty. And Father, thank you for making all things new. Thank you for the tears that I saw rising up when I preached. And thank you for the grace that has come to bring change. <laughs> In Jesus' name, we hope. We absolutely hope. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm doing the best I can. Sometimes it just takes a while. It's so good. Just let him do it. See, when you walked up here, honey, you're so amazing. You, you weren't confessing a wrong thing or taking a wrong identity. Or, you're saying, look, this thing is not me. And enough is enough. And it's done. And I'm receiving your mercy tonight. It's over. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm compelling you to. And I'm glad you walked up here because you're a woman of faith. And I know some of the things that you're thinking before you walked up here. But I'm telling you what, God's excited you walked up here. Because what you did when you walked up here, you said, enough. This is not who I am. So be changed. To be clean in the matter and free in the matter. All the days of your precious, valuable life. You too, sir. Be washed. Thanks for touching God, everyone. As if he's never sinned, as if he's never eaten a tree. Washing God and making him clean. As if he's never sinned, God. As if he's never eaten a tree. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wash him and make him clean. It's so good. Get him, God, in a very special way. Love him and seal his heart for destiny. You're not a man that failed, you're a man that believed. Yeah. yeah. Touch me, Jesus. Yeah. Love you, girl. Make things right, God. Thank you. Make wrong things right. Tonight. Let it be over. Let her never look behind. And let this girl be a wise, amazing, righteous queen. Him. Yeah. You're not a young girl that made a mistake. You're a young girl that made a right choice. You've believed on him. And I believe he's come to your rescue. And I am very excited for you. Yeah. It's his mercy and his love that's been on you. It's, it's like it's so precious. God's going to teach you, sweetheart, to receive his love, to walk in his mercy and just be what he says you are. And I see the struggle in your life ending. I see identity not being an issue. I see pressure leaving your shoulders, weight coming off your soul. You have nothing to compare to or be compared to. You're unique, you're valuable, and God is your standard. Women aren't your standard, the world's not your standard, and people's opinions are not what you live by. You live by the spirit of the living God. Truth defines you, and you are precious in His sight. And you will walk free from this day forward, and you'll be moved no more by the voice of men. You, my dear, will be moved by the voice of your Father, because you are my child. 
And oh, how I love you. And oh, how I make you whole. And I'll never leave you or change my mind. Oh, you're amazing to me. Oh, how I see who you really are. And I'm teaching you, says the Lord, I'm teaching you the weight will never again be upon your shoulders. You go free. You do a precious job. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Behold. Yeah. I'll be right back. I got it. Touch him, God. Thanks for changing his heart. Now wash his mind clean. Let him not live in regret. Let him understand godly sorrow that causes change. And let your mercy triumph over judgment. Every mark come out of his life. Let the gospel reign. Jesus. We got you now. Bless her precious Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Yeah, just love you, girl. Wash her and make her brand new in every way. Build up her steam, her identity as well, God. It's a special word just for you. It's not a repeat of her word. But you've got nothing to prove. You're not compared to anyone. You're precious. You're unique. There's only one you. Don't try to ever be anything like you. And I'm telling you, if you'll talk to him and ask him, he will be here every way you ever have. Because there is no other you. There's no one that can ever be you or fulfill what you are destined. And I'm telling you, God is marking your heart with that potential, that destiny, that value you possess in it. And it's not vanity, and it's not presumption, and it's not arrogance. You, my dear, are worth the blood of Jesus. You are invaluable to the kingdom of heaven. If you weren't precious, you wouldn't have been born. If you weren't the will of God, you wouldn't be standing here. If your picture is not on the family portrait, then something's missing. Because you are destined for life and you've received it through Christ. So Father, wash her clean and mark her heart for glory. And let her walk strong and mature from this day forward and never be swayed. Ever be swayed. Ever. Let people look at her and think, well, let it be so ridiculous that sometimes she's even misjudged as being overconfident and arrogant. And let them same people come to realize this girl just knows who she is. Let her walk in the strength and confidence of identity. And God, I thank you. You removed the reason she came up here. In Jesus' name. Touch your kids. Touch them now. In Jesus' name. That's good. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. He's mending things in you. Even your emotions. You don't need ministry. You don't need to talk about anything. I'm telling you, God is making things whole. You know, even if your soul has been frayed through life, he knits even in the mother's womb. Surely he'll mend again the fabric of your soul. That's what I see. I see God making your emotions strong, fixing your heart, taking your mental capacity, and causing great things to take place right now. I don't know you at all. I don't even know your name. But I see God doing something very deep inside of you. I see him healing you and fixing you deep on the inside. You don't need prayer. You don't need ministry. The Spirit of God is answering your cry. And I'm telling you, He is making you whole. He is making you one with Him. You are not a woman with many issues and memories. You are a woman with the Spirit of the living God. And there are no strongholds. They have no right. They will not remain. You will let her go. And you'll let her go now. I'm not even asking you. I'm telling you. You are finished. You'll rob her no more. You'll blind her no more. You'll toss her to and fro no more. You loose her now. And you let her go. Yeah. Father, thank you. Thank you right now for mending. Thank you for not just tearing down tonight, but thank you for building up. Thank you for planning. Thank you for reaping God.
Father, there's the tenderness of Jesus. That aggression in my voice was not towards you. That was towards the lies that have tried to come to love you and to you who you are. And God is overriding everything you've ever been through, everything that's ever happened to you, and everything you've ever done. God is stepping in tonight. And He's making things right. He is making things right. He's taking away fear in the night. He's taking away memories. He's taking away trauma. He's taking away things that have tried to rob you, honey. He is making things right. You will never be afraid to be alone. You will never be afraid to believe the gospel. You will never be afraid of repercussions and a heavy price. You are going to learn to worship God and trust Him and be free. He is right now putting your feet on solid ground. Man, this is good. Because right now I see what He's doing inside of you. And He's causing you to stand just because He says so. And it doesn't make sense to people. People that don't understand, that have tried to help, that have tried to talk. It's a Spirit of God thing. And you'll see. And you'll understand. And you'll testify. That God touched me one night. And everything changed. <coughs> Holy Spirit, come even more. Thank you. Go deeper, God. That's right. Let nothing remain unproductive. Let not one lie stand. Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord. Confidence flooding into you. Grace of heaven is upon you. That's good. Nobody can stop the stream. It's rolling, girl. It run a whole lot of things over tonight. I'm telling you. Time will tell. You'll see. God, by His Spirit, has changed a whole lot of things. I bless you, Princess. I really love you. Don't hear that one. I love your heart for God. I love your trust in Him. You're hungry, seeking hard. I've enjoyed getting down to the this weekend. And really honestly, I have to believe that God, by His Spirit, makes all things good. You are the princess you always have been. And you're going to begin to see just exactly what that means. You, my dear, are worth the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, and free in Jesus' name. Come, Spirit of God, make all things new. Come, Spirit of God, and just say, I love you. Uh, we're head to our feet, God. Touch her supernaturally like no one could ever touch her. Yeah, you can. Okay. I take my hands off of you. You stand there as long as you can. And I'm telling you, Jesus is coming into the room. He's very He's just going to come on you more. No man needs to touch you. God is keeping you. God's defending you. God's protecting you. God's restoring you. The Spirit of God knows you. He knows you. He knows your address. He loves you. More, Lord, come like you showed me. Come, God. Consume her, Spirit of God. And let her never be the same.
be the same again. Fix it all. By your spirit, oh. Up, up, up. Up, up, up. By your spirit.